improper use of ant matches. They are a way of telling your Spring security implementation to which requests you apply a specific authorization rule. I have here a very simple application. You see me, I did a CSRF disable here. It's what I was telling you earlier. When you do uh, a presentation uh, or uh, write an article or write an example, you usually tend to take it out because if I wouldn't take this out now, I was spending a lot more time to show you how to call the post endpoint because the post endpoint requires by default a CSRF token. So I would have needed to get first a CSRF token. So again, don't mind. And when you see this line 24 here of mine that says CSRF disable, this is not okay in a real world app. And I don't say this is not okay. This is in most cases. I don't want I don't want to be to deal in absolute because uh, again, sometimes CSRF must be disabled, but when when you do that, make sure that if it's not an example and, and if it's a real world uh, application, then, then you, you avoid doing this without uh, taking into consideration properly all the, all the cases and what, what your app's doing. In regards to one measures, you know, you can use three kinds of measures here. When you define your authorization configurations on the endpoint level, you can use MVC measures, you can use ANT measures, and that's what I want to discuss about now. Uh, you can use regex matchers, but regex matchers are, are not that often and um, usually you use regex matchers only if you have uh, such a corner case scenario where no where, where you can't you can't actually refer to the path somehow else than using a regex. But remember that the regex uh, are actually regular expressions are, are usually complex and uh, when you use a regex, uh, you somehow, make your application a little bit less easier to read and that affects the maintainability. So that's why I, uh, I'm i usually very careful with using regexes uh, in case of referring to the path. I uh, usually recommend MVC matchers, but you will see very often. And now if you go now and, and search uh, about matchers on, uh, on the web, uh, you will find uh, a lot more examples using ANT matchers than MVC matchers. And that's why what I'm telling you now is extremely important because ANT matchers can be dangerous. Let me show you how my application works with MVC matchers. So you can read this line very easily. Any post request on the slash product path can be called only if the user that has authenticated has the authority right. And in my case, I will show you that I have my users in a database. And in the database, you will see that I have three users, Rush, Bill, and, and, uh, and John. And you will see that they have the authorities read, write, and user, whatever that is. It's, it's only an example. So I will take user two, which is Rush, and has the authority read. See, user two Rush, it has the authority read. So Rush shouldn't be able, if, uh, if you've seen and you correctly understood this line, Rush, who has authority read, shouldn't be able to access this endpoint because it doesn't have the proper authority. So let's see what actually happens when I, I try to call it now. What I expect is a 403, and I will get a 403. So I'm going to a Postman. And here is my endpoint and you see I'm authenticating with Rush. I'm using basic authentication because my example is a very simple one. So I don't, don't, don't need to use something else. I only want you to focus now on the authorization. So I'm using Rush with the password, which I know it's one, two, three, four, five, because I stored it in the database. And I want to add a, a product. Say I want to add apples. So when, when I, I try to send the request, I get a 403 forbidden, which is what I expect. And look, look what I'm doing here. I, I will put one more slash at the end. So what happens is that Spring, uh, Spring Boot actually, uh, when it configures Spring MVC by default, it will uh, not necessarily 
assign only one path to the same endpoint. If you take a look into my con con uh, into my control configuration here, you will see that I I've only specified that the path slash product is assigned to this one. You see, I have no other path here. It's only slash product. But if I call slash product slash again afterwards, then what, what happens is that I'm actually going into the same endpoint, even though the path is slightly different. Mind that slash product and slash product slash is not the same thing. It, it really is not the same thing. Of course, with MVC matchers, you see I'm getting a 403 when I try to do that either way. So when I try to call product slash or when I try to call product, Either way, I try to do it, I, I get a 403. And of course, the apples are not uh, added here in the products table. You see, I have no apples here. Now, let me change my implementation to use ant matchers. I only change the method. My, I only change the method. I will change nothing else but the method. So instead of MVC matchers, I now have ant matchers. I'm restarting the application. Wait a little bit for it to compile and run. Okay. Here it is, I think. Okay, finally started. It took a little bit, but it started. And now I'm going back and I'm trying again to call slash product. And when I pray, press send, I will again get a 403 forbidden because the slash product path and matchers will apply the same thing here. Basically, I say slash product with post. You see, I'm calling post slash product. So it actually says I should have the authority right to uh, call that. But then I'm going here and I will add one more slash here at the end of the path and I'm sending the request. And oh, fantastic, now I have a 200 okay. So I, I'm, I only add it to the same path one slash. Remember when I did this with MVC matchers? It didn't work. It was still a 403 when I did that with MVC matchers. But now with and matchers, I added this slash and now guess what happened? Even though theoretically, uh, from the point of view of my authorization configurations, I shouldn't have been able to call the post endpoint. I actually have been able to call the post endpoint with a user that doesn't fulfill the authorization rule. And if you look in the database, you will see my apples have actually been stored in the database. So I, this proves you that it really works. So it's not only the status that you've seen in the postman, it really, I was really able to call the endpoint, which theoretically I shouldn't have been able to do. And why is that happening? Because end matchers are quite dangerous. And I see in a lot of cases, I see developers uh, either not knowing, either forgetting that when they use ant matchers, they don't rely on the, the MVC configuration uh, that Spring MVC did. And that means that if Spring MVC associated multiple paths for some reason to a specific endpoint, when you say something like that, please protect slash product and you use an MVC matcher, then you will get protected, protected not only for, for slash product, but for all the other paths that are associated by Spring MVC to the same endpoint. So that's why it's basically protecting both slash product and slash product slash, even though I didn't say that. But when I use ant matchers, the, situa the situation was completely different. Now slash product was secured, but slash product slash was not secured anymore. So if you use ant matchers, you either have to say something like this, for example, which means protect slash product and all the other paths prefixed with slash product. Or if you want it only these two, but you have to know that you, you just say protect both slash product and slash product slash. But if you don't do that yourself, and I've seen a lot of cases in which developers didn't do that themselves, then you allow basically your, your, your authorization configuration is for nothing. You, you add it there, but somebody smarter can call the endpoint without actually even having a user. And uh, another thing that I, I like the, uh, is 
that in, in a lot of cases, see here I have an any request authenticated at the end, but in a lot of cases, developers don't add that at all. And by default, if you don't add that at all, it will basically be equivalent with permit all, which actually means that now I can, if, I, if I'm writing it like this with n matchers, I am able to call the slash product endpoint, which should be, as I see here, only able to be called by a user having the right authority. If I leave it like this, now I'm actually able to call it without even having a user. So imagine what that means in a production application. Imagine what that means if that endpoint exposes or changes data that belongs to a specific user. It's actually a way in which you allow your data, the data of, your, of the users of your app to be stolen or modified. You leave your application, you leave, you leave your, your, the data of your users vulnerable. And that's precisely one of the things you want to avoid in any application. Remember that security vulnerabilities might have uh, severe consequences for the owner of, of the application. Now that I, I've shown you this, let's let's go back to our presentation. That was the improper use of fund measures, and I, I hope I, I made myself clear how important that actually is.